option is what you take here right Xin Zhao makes a lot of sense in my mind but you could also uh so, so, there's a range of options available at this moment but i definitely think we'll see the jinx locked in the lee sin uh lee sin's obviously gonna be a big pick we saw lee sin rise as a combo for lng so perhaps rng could be concerned about potentially going up against it um and it also makes me think are we gonna see gwen in this first rotation right i feel like it'll probably be banned if we go second but it could a team could just opt to snap it up uh in these early picks and it looks like rng might end up denying the Lee Sin away from Tarzan. Not wanting to give too much power to the mid jungle on the side of LNG, but they already have that rise with Dorian B, already have that roaming pressure. I expect to see a jungle pick for LNG here. Potentially, well, actually, they're going to go for the Caitlyn, so I feel like you're probably going to take Caitlyn Lux in this situation. Uh, and then for RNG, yeah. they kind of have to answer with support here to ensure they have a half decent matchup. Although I say that, perhaps the Lee Sin LeBlanc, very powerful at dealing with the rise in the mid lane. Yeah, they're looking to maybe they want to try and get something for Xiao Hu, and Xiao Hu is the carry, and he is on the LeBlanc. Massive power now with the Lee Sin LeBlanc combination. And we saw how powerful the Lee Sin Rise was in our previous series for EDG. LeBlanc Lee Sin can do so much, just straight up burst. Let's talk about here. So RNG jungle bands, really high priority in this situation, right? The LNG, it's got to be support. My concern is that we've seen Caitlyn Lux, and you kind of need your team to play around it. RNG have a really strong mid jungle already. If they can secure it by banning away things like this in Zhao, they can just lean bot and just destroy this Kate Lux. So I expect to see RNG would want to take something like the Leona or the Nautilus. LNG will probably ban that away. They could potentially throw a ban towards top lane, but I really think right now you've committed this Kate Lux. You have to ensure that they can survive the laning phase. If you have an engaged support on the side of RNG and you have Lee Sin and LeBlanc taking over mid, LNG are going to have a rough time. Gonna have a very, very rough time. And now, see where the bands want to go. I like these jungle bands coming out. Wouldn't be surprised to see maybe the Viego or the Jarvan being banned away here from Tarzan. Things that can have that early skirmishing power. Take it off the board. Gonna go with the Jarvan in the end of it all. So now the final ban. You imagine it would be the Thresh here coming out from LNG. That being said, I think though, probably the Leona, actually. I was gonna uh, say, I feel actually, like the engaged the Thresh are what I'm most scared of. Yeah, the Ming kind of roaming threat and being able to engage on top of this Lux. Maybe the Leona comes out. You still have options with the Rakan, perhaps, if you want to go for the full engage. So plenty available for Ming as we start to come into the last ban here. And LNG then will have to finalize their composition. And they've got options available to them. They just have to finish off where they want to go topside. And I feel like Bin getting the counter pick here could be pivotal for RNG in this matchup. Could be. You could just pick up the Gwen here and now if you do want to prioritize that. Uh, obviously gives you another great scaling lane that your mid jungle can play towards. So I think if they're going to take something like the Gwen, probably here and now. Uh, if they're not, it'll be the support. But honestly, with Leona Nautilus off the table, obviously, you know, LNG don't need to pick their support. They already have the Lux. So I think RNG are fine just to leave that to last. Scope out what jungle LNG end up picking. And now you know, we've seen a lot of these jungles thinned away. Tarzan needs something that you can sort of apply that early pressure contest this mid jungle out of rng cannon comes out for Arle. strong team fight we often see it picked up in the gwen it does mean that you kind of need an ad jungler in this situation can't really go for something ap i think volley bear makes a lot of sense you know has that early pressure is a solid front line and now rng in terms of support it's a little bit tricky right because the big hard engage options have been taken uh you could even see something a bit fringe come out like a rel in this situation maybe even something like it depends how heavily you are going to be able to stop playing things around bot. Thresh would be safe, but wouldn't have as much engage pressure. I think the problem with Rakan is it's not the best matchup in the luck. So they actually opt, instead of going for an engage option, they're just going to go for the Karma. They're going to match trade for trade, right? It means the lane is going to be in a bit better state when Wei and Xiaohu show up bot lane, but still a definitely a viable option to play through. And again, you look at two compositions now locked and loaded. It feels like if RNG can survive that initial engage, that initial burst that comes out with the cannon, the Kate, and of course the looks, you are able to kite away. You should be able to chase down these kills. So for RNG, it's about surviving that initial team fight engagement coming out from LNG. And for LNG, it's about making sure that when they jump on the people, they finish it off and they move forward as quickly as they possibly can to secure those advantages. I think what we're seeing here is both teams have pretty solid mid jungles, right? For applying pressure i think in terms of the the 2v2 the the lee sin leblanc so mobile that setup from the leblanc the burst from the lee sin but if you look at the rise volley bear right you have a rise realm open a volley bear in he ults to knock your tower out my side lanes would be in so much pain in that situation but these aren't picks that scale exceptionally right they're defined in the later stages but it's very much play the mid jungle to get your side lanes ahead kennen gwen 
Caitlyn, Jinx, these are all champions who will do excellent work with gold. And so this battle is going to be in the mid lane, but it will be about setting up your side laners for success in this one. We are locked and loaded. Curious to see how this mid lane clash goes. And again, there is battles across the map for both of these teams. We'll see where the teams want to focus themselves at, where they want to put their priorities. If you're an RNG fan, if you're an RNG stan, you know after Gal, or excuse me, after Uzi, it was all about Xiao Hu. It's all about getting him the resources he needs. And for LNG, it's about opening up that mid lane, getting out onto the sides of the map so Doombi can have a wider impact outside of his lane. Both these teams hungry for the win. LNG for the million times, still undefeated 7-0 in series in the LPL. RNG looking to equal them out on series win, set themselves up for a 7-2 and, and move themselves positively into the second half. It's going to be a curious one. It's going to be a bloodbath. And in my opinion, and my hope is that it's going to be a close one. We're going to jump onto Summoner's Rift now for game one of this best of three. LNG versus RNG. And I just love when teams come in and they're matching, right? It's like we saw game two, there's a bit of a, a clash of styles uh, from in the last series, where it's like this heavy early game comp from IG, heavy scaling from the opposite side from EDG. But here, both teams have a lot of agency in the early levels. Both teams have strong scaling options. It really is just going to come out to who's edged a little advantage in the draft and also execution. Who can find those windows to punish? Now, I will say, RNG, their mid jungle, pretty strong at level three, whereas the ults will open up a lot of side lane options for LNG. Also, I feel like the Karma in this matchup, so one of the things with the Karma into the Lux, Caitlyn in general, is you have good AoE, right? There's good push power from the Jinx and the Karma, both can just shred the waves. The harass from Karma is quite hard to avoid, but what's scary is that you could always just eat a binding and die. And I mean that, like a binding connects, and if, you know, LNG's bot lane are like level four, level five, they can probably just close to 100 to zero you bare minimum for some uh, four summoners so as much as the karma will do a good job here it's always a delicate situation as a result that's a quick one there as well just a uh, note on the runes we are going to see the guardian here for lumao going a little bit more defensive recognizing that the karma poke and harass is something they need to be feared but also the conqueror for doing B. it's not uncommon to see it on the rise but definitely shows what style of play he's looking for he's looking for long extended fights where he's able to continuously get the damage down and not having that phase rush means he's not too worried about getting caught out yeah and honestly he might help you to cut through the gwen in the later stages handle it a bit more on the side lane that may actually be the strategy right maybe the answer in the side lane later on will be doing b rather than ali to deal with that gwen because obviously gwen has become a bit of a menace there now something interesting we did see is in the bot lane uh we actually saw lumao go on the, the shield level one and just trying to mitigate the poke for ming but unsurprisingly karma's level one is so powerful it's so hard to deal with the trading power and this is kind of why they picked it up here right they didn't have the hard engage options they end up going for toe to toe in the trading but the aoe power trading power lng's bot lane already on the back foot and the man for q hitting both targets you love to see that as a karma player I mean, straight up, that's just the power you can get. You have got access to your ultimate nice and early. It does give you so much priority, and it does mitigate a lot of what we see from this Car Caitlyn Lux. Yes, very powerful lane when you get a couple of levels. Very, very good at just getting that early pressure, but the Karma does a lot to mitigate it, and you can see Tarzan already roaming down sort of towards this bot side, seeing if he can sneak himself into a brush, and he is going to be able to do that. Gala may be forced to flash away here, and ooh, they actually Great look for flash. Ming. Great flash from Ming. They get it out of Tarzan, and Ming stays alive. He read it so well, because the thing is, if you flash early, you trade down and stun. Tarzan just repeats ganks, and you're dead. But because they traded it at the perfect moment, not too early, not too late, it ends up just being a trade of summoners. Ming gets out, and they don't manage to get the kill. Because honestly, if you land that stun from Tarzan, the root follows, you are dying. Yeah, there is no there is no recourse in that moment. There is just death and pain, as we can see now. Tabrue trying to make his own work as he gets a flash out, and that's exactly what you talked about. When you trade back summoners, if you don't get the junglers, it's just a trade down. Absolutely. I will say, though, Lumao kind of navigated that one pretty okay. Firstly, in that play, he dodged away from the Q for Ming, and then he rooted Ming so uh, he couldn't stay in range to get the root off the W. If either of those things happened, if you got slowed, if the root connected, could well have just seen Lumao actually die there rather than just a summon a burn. So definitely down the wire, some nice little outplays from the support, but overall, RNG edging ahead in those trades, two flashes for one in favor of them.
This is where this is getting very dicey already. No kills, but action on both sides. <laughs> I love it, right? It's, <laughs> it's so tense. <laughs> it's nervous, and like the team that gets a successful, successful gank will pay off dividends. Now, obviously, a big thing is talking about mid lane. We saw Xiaohu applying some pressure, move down a little bit, move back up, but Zoom B is working towards that level 6 point. When the Realm Moves available, like Ming and Garlop had a great old time just pushing the wave in and harassing. When that Rise ult is there, it makes things a lot more precarious. Have to be really cautious about stepping too far up in the top lane. Really been putting some pressure down onto Ale on this cannon. And remember, like people pick this cannon because it scales well in the team fights and it can do a decent job of neutralizing uh, the Gwen. But honestly, Bin has been playing this pretty well. Doing pretty decently here. As, uh... Gala and Ming just doing what they can to keep themselves a priority. As I said, we're going to see the 2v2 in mid lane. Doobie flashes away immediately, and the Volley Bear is there. And will Wei be able to get himself out and save? It looks like he just about keeps himself alive. And that's going to be enough to keep him there. Beautifully played there by Doobie and Tarzan. These junglers are just literally following each other. I love that. It's just like we see one shop, the other's there every time. And Tarzan gets the advantage there because he arrives later, so he's able to turn it around. But in terms of trading, it's still even some of the trade. And when you think about it, right, Tarzan burning his flash bot lane, if he hadn't, if he, if uh, Ming had flashed early and Tarzan still had the summoner, Wei was dead there, right? If Wei had burned flash bot lane, Wei was dead there. It really, it came down to the summoner's burn earlier. He was able to get out there, but now, Zoyan B has no flash available, right? So, is in a precarious position. His level six is there. If he gets priority, he can move. The scary thing is if you move into the fog of war and LeBlanc is waiting, you're gonna have a bad time. We are gonna very, have, very much have a bad time. I love that as well. It's kind of like, you know, the art attack. It's like, and here's my flash that I used earlier. It's, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're kind of hoping and praying that it doesn't come down to that. But both junglers going tit for tat. And this is good for Wei as well, because again, we talked about how good this, you know, Tarzan has been for his team so far, the split, and keeping him under wraps, keeping him in check is probably a better way to put it, is still positive for the side of RNG. Now though, big level six is going to be hit. You have got the Realm Warp, the Slicing Maelstrom, and on the other side, you have the Needlework, and of course, the the Mimic coming out from Xiaohu. So we are going to see maybe some more moves coming out from LNG as they start to really scale up into this team fighting composition. Yeah, and we see a bit of a difference where it's LNG uh, who are on this side of the map, and obviously Wei will pause, uh, sorry, Wei on the other side of the map for RNG. And it's trying to set up a bit of vision control around the bot side river. This means that if, if Zoom B does push the wave in, very easy for him just to go on the fog of war, right? And as a result, RNG's bot lane have to run scared. So this vision control they're establishing already, pretty instrumental. And it does mean they can just pick up the dragon if they want. But now, this is the point, right? Zoom B's in the fog of war. You don't know where Tarzan is. RNG's bot lane. This is scary. You have to back away. You don't know exactly what's going on here. We will see Lumao. Trying to play aggressive, and yep, RNG immediately react, but they're going to see that the heal be used as the Realm Orc comes down. Nice traps there from Gala. Just stops any kind of re-engage. They will still get themselves an advantage, but it's traded back. Look at mid lane. You can look towards your, the solo gold going over to, uh, to Xiaohu. And RNG aren't going to be unhappy with how they respond. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's one of those things where they got away. They didn't die, right? So that's a positive. They do manage to get that plate in the mid for the LeBlanc, but it's still LNG being the proactive ones, using that pressure in the side lane, able to pick up a dragon. My one criticism is that I don't think the Realm Warp was needed, right? You know, they went greedy for the kills, but ultimately Gala had the cleanse still. It was going to be hard to pin one of them down. And at the end of the day, by burning the Realm Warp, it just means you don't have as much pressure until it's available once again. They are once more trying to lean bot side, uh, I've got the Stormbringer. Now who's heading over? Maybe he'll help defend. They're going to try and maybe look for the defense here. As we can see now, Flash burn, but Flash immediately responded there by Tarzan. But now Xiaohu is here. The Stormbringer comes down. That's Tarzan picking up the first kill. The Flash from Gala doesn't keep him safe. And Tarzan stays alive. The Triumph keeps him topped up nicely. And that two quick kills on the bot side. LNG fully unlocking this mid jungle duo. Yeah, really nice play. And Xiaohu being there wasn't enough. Wei is on the top side, picking up the Herald. But you're already losing out massively. Two kills going down bot and another plate taken. LNG, they got the rise, they make it work, and Tarzan delivering huge in that engagement. 
how he stayed alive, I do not know. He was so close to going down, but you've not only gained yourself two kills, you've also burned all summoners now in this bot side. You have got huge advantage for the LNG bot laners here to just try and maybe get something else on their own. Great play here from LNG. And this is the thing, right? If we saw RNG pressure the, the mid lane, right? They managed to, to get some RNG's flash, but I'm gonna hold up Thor, we're gonna see some action. We are Take gonna see some action slicing. Nelson perfectly kited though as way. Gonna take one more shot from the turret, but he is totally fine. And that's gonna be a lot of gold now going over to Bin. This is where this matchup gets a little bit interesting. You're putting a lot of resources in bot side for LNG, but just as much is going on top side for RNG. Yeah, so we'll see a replay of that and exactly how Tarsum survived. I think big aspect of one, the health gain from his ultimate first gets the shield there. The old health means he doesn't die to the burst. And after taking down the AD carry, he gets a triumph heal. And that's the thing, it's a LeBlanc, right? LeBlanc only has burst damage. The fact that Tarzan's able to heal up and get out means he is pretty safe. But RNG vans are back. And a big thing, while all this was happening bot side from Tarzan, Way does steal away some camps. So He's got a, a little bit of an... Well, it's actually, he's still down in gold, but due to the CS advantage he has, he's not down as much as he would be considering Tarzan has an extra kill. Yeah, I think that's the big thing is that Wei was able to answer it out. They also got a lot of plates up in top side for Bin. They still have the Rift Herald in tow, so we might see a little bit of an engagement coming out. And speaking of engagements, LNG are taking control of this bot side. This time around, though, Wei is off to the side to make sure that if any shenanigans do go down, he should be there to respond in kind. Absolutely, and with the Herald as well. So that means if something does happen, not only can you turn it around and punish, but you're able to capitalize pretty heavily. Uh, gotta be careful though. It's like you've seen how the lane is kind of turn around with no summoners available or summoners advantage to LNG's bot lane. You have to be so cautious about stepping up on this K-Lux because Cleanse not there for Gala. If a binding does land, either target is just dead. I mean, Wei hasn't done anything for a little while, but they haven't got any vision in top side of this half of, uh, of, the, of the jungle for either side. So they don't know anything of where this Lee Sin could be. So they are just basically making estimates, taking stock of where he might be. And Tarzan says, well, I haven't seen him in a while. He might be on this bottom side. And now he's actually been spotted out. I believe he got spotted out just before that ward was taken down. Now they should be able to stop, try and stop themselves from getting caught out in this bot side. And we see the LeBlanc Lee Sin pairing up again, but, you know, it's really been the story of the Rise Volley Bear getting off their wing cons, right? We said there's the power of the Lee Sin LeBlanc, but the side lane leans is what the Rise and the Volley really excels at. So far, that's really what we've seen come to fruition. So I want to see Wei finding these windows, right? Moving around Xiaohu, moving in the enemy jungle, looking for picks, very effective at doing so. But for now, it looks like they're moving up to the top side. Potentially want to threaten using that Herald. There's only three plates left on that top tower. They are going to make a play with three members strong. But if you look at the bot side, that's a low HP tower, so they have to be quick. Yeah, they have to be quick here. Azala does flash away, gets caught up by the ethereal chase. No, he does not, actually. The minion walked in front of him, last second.com, but they got the flash out of the cannon. So that flash slicing Maelstrom engage not going to be available for another few minutes. But at the end of it all, they are just accepting the trade right now. They're saying, look, we're going to give away the bot side. We cannot defend it anymore. We need to try and keep Gala going. This is a trade down, right? LNG get first tower blood solo for the Caitlyn. And as much as you trade back top, you just lost some plates mid as well. So LNG overall coming up ahead. You can see they got a 1k gold lead. Even if RNG killed the Kennen, I still think they would be trading down in that situation. But oh, the Realm, Realm, Realm coming in. They're coming in. Gala has to cleanse. And Gala's caught between a rock and a hard place. He's going to try and solo out the big old bear. But I don't think he's got the damage. Ming is running for his life. But there's nothing for him to do. LNG are just ripping apart RNG. Beautiful punish on the overstay. And the critical thing is no flashes available for the bot lane. RNG start coming. But they were trapped between a rock and a realm warp. Nothing they can do to get out. And now the lead is blown up quite a bit. 2,000 ahead to LNG. Remember, we were talking about this game. Both teams had strong scaling elements they can play for. Both teams pretty much in that regard. So I feel like the fact that LNG are falling ahead, really good omen for them. Yeah, and that's going to be LNG getting themselves their second dragon as well. So two dragons off of that, a two and a half thousand gold lead. And important as well, their game plan is working out. Look at the kill distribution. 301 for Tarzan, 103 for Doonby. They're just playing like they always play and RNG don't have an answer for it. Yeah, I mean, the fact that we still have the ult for the cannon here, beautiful ultimate from Lumao hitting both as well with the double binding. And on top of that, Garlo trying to run in the other direction, but with no flash and not escaping the volley bear, just ends up in a really rough position. And now LNG, 
they have that sizable lead to play with they can keep applying the pressure this has been a great start and the thing is as well is that rng got that first herald right and sometimes you see you know one team will play the bot side they'll get the dragon lead the other team gets the herald lead we'll come into the mid game one side has two dragons the other side has a bit of a gold lead lng have the gold lead they have the dragons and they got the first tower so despite the fact they didn't get the herald they're winning on all fronts yeah, they really, really are. And again, we look towards that mid lane. Xiaohu versus Doombi. Xiaohu hasn't had the same level of impact straight up. It has been the Doombi show. Doombi using these Realm Warps to make something happen for his team. And it does feel like right now, RNG are, are reeling just a little bit. Now, again, they are not out of this game just yet, but they are going to have to try and be a little bit more proactive, in my opinion, just to try and get themselves back into the series. Unless you wait, still away at camp, but you're actually in a bit of trouble here. A lot of members Sorry. clapping down onto him, but I think he should just be able to run towards Xiaohu. We can see on the top side, Tarzan is picking up the second Herald, but the trade-off is Xiaohu is doing some, uh, get some pressure onto that bot lane tower. In the meantime, Wei is farming a red, right? But you're losing mid lane tower. Again, this is just better from LNG. LNG are playing this smarter, playing at a pace of which RNG are not prepared to try and, you know, try and uh, fight against they will trade towers but you've lost the rift herald so i still maintain this is better and another realm over the top side bin is in a lot of trouble the flash forward from ala uh, or sorry from lumao that was ambitious right got his immune ambitious you remember that it wasn't one. even the same it wasn't even on the same like setup as the rest of his team which is yeah. the weird bit for me <laughs> but either way flash bin but now wait i'm looking for a pick on the light He's gonna look for it, but he gets caught in by the Ordal Snap Trap, and there's gonna be the Gale Force. Wayne gonna He's be in a dead. lot of trouble. Whoa. He's straight up dead. Nothing he can do, and this hesitation from the side of RNG is just costing them so much. Wait, oh, they say that might. Oh, the Ethereal Chain needed to land it. If he lands that, they're able to kill him off. He still had Flash. He ends up using his heal. That could have been a moment there from Xiaohu, but again, LNG are just playing better. Wei just feels out of sorts, right? It feels like his focus has been farming up, right? When his team are losing on the map. And then he looks for this pick and it's just like, no, just gets absolutely obliterated. Like this is a jungle difference, right? Mid jungle, we said was this big fight. We wanted to highlight between these two and how important it was in setting the tone of this game. Tarzan and Doingby have just been absolutely crushing it. This is getting to a point as well where you don't really have many options available to. Yes, you still have the Gwen and the Jinx scaling up, but how do you engage? You are relying on Wei to get himself behind the carry to kick them back, and then also the Karma to kite back from the damage of, of the oncoming Rise and the, and the Volley Bear. So you have got a very difficult time of making this work for yourself. And honestly, I got to call out when I call it out. It just feels like RNG just aren't on the same page. They're slow. They're sluggish. Yeah, it really does. It feels like LNG are setting the pace. It feels like they're very clear on the wing cons making it work. Now, RNG, they're behind. They start to try and make these plays where they'll look for picks, but look at LNG. Scooping up their bot lane and the, and the jungle, pushing through into the uh, red side jungle of RNG, stealing away camps. And Arle, you know, I had some criticisms around Arle. I felt like he was dying a bit unnecessarily early in the split, misplaying in lane. He's been pretty solid this game, right? He is not falling down. He is making sure that they're not able to pressure him multiple times. They've tried to clap and he's managed to avoid it. And even here, trying to contest this camp from Wei will force a fight. But it's like, again, you're getting a camp as Wei. You're losing your structures on the top side of the map. It's not and a good they trade. Have, they haven't even used the Rift Herald yet. They're going to be able to get that smashed in on top of this tier two. And you're gaining nothing here from RNG. The Dragon has even spawned, so you can't even stop the stacking on that. And this is where you've got to find some kind of a play. You've got to be creative. You've got to be proactive because right now you're just losing on all fronts. Yeah, and it feels like they're fishing, right? RNG just constantly looking for these opportunities, but they don't come up. LNG are very clean with their movements, their rotations to make sure they're not getting picked off. And I feel like for so long, Wei has just been in this position where it's like, he's kind of behind them. He's kind of there. If they walk straight into him, they might die, but they don't. And then he just walks off and LNG are fine. It's like a repeated thing that's going on. And now four towers to two, 4,000 gold lead, gold lead for LNG. They're getting back on the map. They're a little bit late to this dragon. But with this advantage in terms of gold, I don't think they're really that bothered. They'll just push mid and they can rotate over.
I mean, yeah, like you've got a cannon, you have a volley bear, you have so many ways of engaging, and if you've got a light binding onto any one of RNG, you are dead. There's no more to be said or done about it. So now, Dragon has been started. There goes Ala, trying to see if he can look for something on the side of this one. Dragon will reset. They're going to try and burst out the cannon, and already you can see the slicing Maelstrom doing work. Xiao Hu is dead. Light binding lands onto Ming, and that's soul point for LNG. Now, here comes the party. Never mind, it's just Doombie. He says, you know what? I'm going to make this party my own. You can party by yourself and the rest of the team can follow. They follow his lead as they push on forward. Gala oh, has nowhere to them. go and there's just nothing they can do. LNG Jeez. are just smacking RNG. 5 for O, oh, and we kept saying this is LNG's next big challenge. This is LNG's next big challenge. Look at RNG, reigning MSI champions and they are stomping them right now. 5 for O oh, in the team fight. Beautiful play. Don't even be goes in the realm world, but he doesn't overcommit. Flashes out. Gives the team space to catch up. They stomp it. They get the dragon. They get another tier two tower. 8,000 gold lead now. They'll be able to re see the replay. So, you know, Arle looks like he potentially be in a bit of trouble. But the CC layering that comes on a Shahu, like considering it's a LeBlanc, just unable to play the game, right? Stunned from the slicing Maelstrom. The root comes out from the, uh, the rise as well. And then this decision here cautious about over committing because if they all go in this right at least in kick could be devastating it's only doing b he flashes out instantly so he doesn't get punished remember this is a tank rise he's not gonna die and then the follow-up is there just beautiful execution from lng uh, lng we had questions we said is this a team that can challenge at the top of the table? This you know, isn't a team good. that this isn't <laughs> just a team that can challenge at the top of the table. This is a team that is smashing right now they are looking so clean so coordinated so just smart big brain about this game and rng yes they're feeling slow but there's just nothing they can do about it they're not playing to the same level now they're gonna look try and find an opportunistic pick the slicing motion comes out oh. that was beautiful from ala though he flashes forward to guarantee that shao can do and he lives the needlework will just about take him out and they eventually trade it back but it's a one for one off of what should have been as i say a one for one a two for one it was, should have been just perfect from LNG, or from rng and now lng they're not done there's just so strong so Solo, just moving forward. LNG, please stop. We're on Twitch. We have terms of service. RNG, they try and make a play, but Tarzan, this whole game has read way like a book. He knows exactly where the opportunity can arise, and he punishes it. And it feels like RNG, their mid jungle, this whole game, have been opportunistic, looking for windows that LNG never provided. I was in a window, that was a guillotine, and they dropped it straight on them. LNG not able to turn on the Baron. I mean, Ming, you might as well try and steal it, but I'm not optimistic. Oh my lord right now. Ming gonna try and go for something, and just honestly, he was blind. They, they didn't have a smite. There was an opportunity, but what else is he supposed to do? Come into this replay here, because again, look, I wanted you to show this. Look at Ale. He recognizes he's dead either way, so he flashes aggressively, knowing that the distortion's yeah. gonna come back for Shaolu. Yeah, he actually doesn't get hit by the Sonic Wave because of the flash. Dodges another one here. And yes, he does eventually go down, but he buys so much time. Tarzan gets in, kills Wei. More time is bought by Shaohu with a chase down. I find it just hilarious, like, and this is expected because Light is so strong on this Caitlyn, right? With the red buff as well. Bin has no armor, went with the Mirk Tread just runs at him man this is not how it's supposed to go for gwen and it's still going yeah they're still gonna try and get it show who bye <laughs> <laughs> i got nothing else for you he's gonna be seeing the light and light is just a silent carry in this hasn't been having the pop-off moments but has been doing enough to keep it in six zero three on the caitlin three items rng I don't like saying this very often, but you're thinking about game two right now. There's no real way you can defend this. The inhibitor turret in mid will fall. You have Baron up for at least another just under two minutes. This is going to be game here because you can still turn off the towers as the volley bear. You still have the Stormbringer. Yeah, I feel like maybe this could be a bit of a precarious one, but so far ahead, I think they're just going to step up and do it. This RNG's last chance to try and turn things around. 
You gotta go for it. LNG though, just not gonna give him that opportunity. Nexus turret number one does fall, but look at Light just peppering away. They've got George, the kind of minion, the buffed up kind of minion, just doing so much in way. Tentative for a good reason, but he hasn't looked confident on this Lee Sin at all, at all this entire game. He has been nothing, he's been muted, and he has just not been able to make things work. He uses Smite on top of the minion to try and get something. There's a kick down. They have the slicing now, but it's only gonna last for a couple of seconds there. Allah gets traded. It's a one for one, but they're too big. They're too strong. They're there's too much damage to deal with it now with no turrets left. You can see them hungry for blood. LNG, we wanted to see what you could do and you did not disappoint. Light even saying he wants to take out Xiao Hu just for some extra brownie points. But in 23 and a half minutes, LNG dismantle, disassemble, burn to a crisp and blow the ashes into the water because they just, there's nothing left for RNG. They didn't make a misstep, right? They just walked it down mid, and that was probably the most precarious point of the game, because it's like, it can sometimes be tentative, just running it down that early in the game gives the enemy team a, a chance to play defense, but they were so far ahead, so clean, didn't give a single opportunity. And man, I, you know, if I was RNG, I was, I'd be wishing I messed up in draft here. I'd be wishing there was something yeah. you can just go, <laughs> let's fix this, fix this, and it's fine. Sure, you can argue that maybe leaving the rise open was problematic, but man, I feel like both teams came in with clear win cons, pretty solid drafts, and LNG just gapped them. They were just the better Straight team up. in that game. And RNG, man, you need to bounce back because it looked... We've had, like, <laughs> we've had... The only game, I think, that's been, like, that one Saturday, it's, like, what game one, EDG against TT. I think that was, like, the only one that was close let's, to that. Let's this call a spade a, a spade. Let's call a spade a spade. RNG, that was bad. That was not what we expect from the reigning MSI champions, the quarterfinalists at Worlds, a team that arguably just upgraded their roster. That was just not what we expected from RNG. This is, and again, we, we were so excited for this team, or it's not even for this team, for this matchup today. Myself and you said it a million times how we were, this is going to be so close for top five teams. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> LNG just said, nah, oh, screw you. You don't get to have a fun matchup. We are just too damn good. And I mean, it says it all. I, I got to call it, you know, we call it out when we call it out. And again, like, you know, we will always defend people when they have to be defended. But this was just looking, RNG looking hesitant uncomfortable not what i expect to see from this team and straight up just looked like they weren't on the same page as each other they just were very disjointed way very much fearful of what he was going to go for didn't really get anything going and when you're playing something like a lee sin you have to be proactive you cannot sit back and wait hoping for the perfect opportunity to present itself because nine times out of ten when you're against a team like lng it's not going to that's the that's the exact point. Is that he was waiting for opportunities. It felt opportunistic. It felt like maybe LNG will make a mistake and we can punish. But the difference was LNG was forcing things. They were making things happen. They set the pace of the game. And honestly, this game was such a big jungle diff. Tarzan, you know, yeah. we said it before the series. He very clearly made the statement and establishing he's the best jungler in the league. Yeah, he is very much so. We are going to see, though, if RNG change anything coming into game two or if LNG are going to...